I'm about 20 years into my career, and I find it difficult to love work. I always have. I've always felt that it was a uh, a task or a need rather than a want. Mm -hmm. And you position it differently in your book. So tell me a little bit about why you think it is possible mm -hmm. and uh, plausible to mm -hmm. get to a point where you love what you do for a living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think before I answer that, I think uh, I'd like to make a, a reflection on what you said that you have sort of, you know, the basic sentiment that you have around work, um, mm -hmm. you know, that it's, you know, it's a need rather than sort of, you know, something you have to do, maybe yeah. not something that you, you want to do. Right. It's interesting that, uh, you know, my mentor for many years, Sheik sent me high, you know, the flow guy. Um, he did this experience sampling method that he developed and, and used, you know, in organizations and, and whatever. And uh, what he always found is that um, the platform where people experienced flow the most was at work. Mm. Uh, they almost never experienced it when they spent time with loved ones and family. And yeah. sometimes when they were engaged in sort of leisure activities or whatever. At the same time, when you ask people to rate, you know, these three different life dimensions, okay, they always rated work the lowest, okay? Mm. So we had long conversations about that. And uh, his perspective or hypothesis around it is that, and it goes back to your sort of initial, you know, what you said, is that especially when you work for a big organization, uh, your sense of autonomy is lower, okay? You're, you're a little piece in a big machinery, okay? Um, your work tasks most often are defined for you up front, okay? And you also fundamentally feel that um, you don't have an you, you don't have a choice, you know, you have to work, okay? So, and, and that's a fact of life, you know, for many people, if you are not sort right. of independently, you know, wealthy and born into that. Um, and that comes more than to the answer, okay, to, okay, what, what how to think about it. Well, in my experience, the most important environment is not the external environment that you live in, okay? And I think a good example of that is now, if you look for the past decade, decade, you know, how, how companies have invested in employee experience, you know, psychological safety. I've never seen organizations for the past 30 years being so meticulous and so deliberate about how they deal with the employees. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, this with quiet quitting happens and all these things, okay? Right. So it's obvious to me that the most important environment that you need to master is the internal environment. That is what happens here and how you think about things. Mm -hmm. And if you understand that and understand how to do that, you can basically enjoy any type of activity. It's just a question how you think about it. Well, and <clears throat> I'm so glad we started there because that was the primary message that I took from your book.